So I go fishing with my dad every summer, and it's a tradition that is familiar to many of you here tonight, but it's something that didn't really start until we were at our most distant, a point in my life where I didn't know if I was going to continue to have a relationship with my father. It was January of 2011. It was dark, cold, and snowy as it ought to be in winter in Anchorage. And it was getting later and later, and my dad had yet to come home. He wasn't answering his phone. None of his colleagues knew where he was. And as it got darker, we got more worried, and my mom decided she was going to go to Providence Hospital, where he was practicing as a pediatric oncologist, to look for him. And though my twin sister and I were 17, juniors at Service High School, and we had just gotten separate bedrooms, that night I went down to our formerly shared bedroom, and we crawled into the same bed and held each other and waited. And it felt like a really long time. It felt like forever. And we finally got a call from our mom. And she had found our dad. And he was in a rough condition, but he was alive, and he was going to spend the night in the hospital. So the next day, we went to school, and we were running on what little sleep we had had the night before, and during third period was the junior prom assembly. So they pulled the whole class out of our actual academic work, it was totally worth it, into the gym so they could announce prom royalty. And my sister and I were both on prom court, which is perfect, we're twins, there was no sibling rivalry, and Everyone who was on prom court, their parents were there taking pictures, and our mom was there, but not our dad, because he wasn't allowed to leave the hospital, if even for an hour. And so the week went on, and there were tests to take and papers due, and we were visiting our dad in the hospital, trying to cheer him up, and I still had to come up with excuses for why I wasn't doing my pre-calc homework. And the Friday before junior prom, as fate would have it, I had an orthodontist appointment, and I got my braces removed, which if this was a teen movie would be perfect, because previous to this point in my adolescence, I re really tried hard not to show my teeth when I smiled. So I either kept my lips closed, or it was this really awkward grin where I was trying to pull my lips down <laughs> in front of my teeth, because I hated my braces. I had them for forever. And so the next day comes, and prom is at the PAC, so this is not my first time on stage at the PAC. <laughs> Um, not the most uh, traditional prom locale, but they weren't allowed to have it at the Anchorage Museum again after the previous year. So, <laughs> so we get on stage, I'm pretty sure it was the Atwood, I can't remember which theater, you know, and all the lights are on the whole time, we're told we can only dance face to face, and there's plenty of chaperones intermingling. And you guys know what happens. And so they announce prom queen, and it's me, and <laughs> I just told this story because I wanted people to remember that I was prom queen, it's like, it's been a while <laughs> trying to ride that wave, and so it's me, and my mom was there to take pictures, but our dad was still in the hospital, so he couldn't be there, so the next morning, Sunday morning, for visiting hours, we go, and we visit our dad, and we're sharing with him our prom night and the pictures and how beautiful our dresses were and we have our sashes on and I have my crown on and we're talking about how our makeup was and my hair never stays in curls but it was curly at the beginning of the night and I'm sitting on the vent underneath the window and my dad shares with us why he has been in the hospital. He had attempted suicide. And if you want someone to feel stupid while you tell them serious news, make sure they're wearing a plastic crown because it was highly effective. And I remember sitting on that vent, just wanting to run and just wanting to unhear what I had just heard, but I made myself sit there. And instead I thought about how overwhelmed I was and how great it would be to just slip through that vent and not be there. And though my family was staggering underneath the weight of this trauma, life still went on in this surreal way and there were ski meets to go to, and tests to take, and ACTs, and SATs, and I still had to come up with excuses for why I wasn't doing my pre-calc homework, and summer jobs were had, and high school romances, and my sister and I were captains of our running team, and all of this was happening, but I wasn't really sharing it with my dad. I wasn't really talking with my dad. I was so hurt 
and I was so angry, and it was just so convenient to be angry that I didn't even try to start to understand what he was going through. And so two summers later, after holidays and birthdays and other milestones have come and gone without much other than an awkward exchange, I find myself in a car with my dad driving down to the Kenai to go fishing because life still goes on and that's what you do in Alaska, except my dad and I had never gone fishing together before. And I don't remember who initiated this outing, but we didn't really talk much on the drive down. I fell asleep, but my dad was driving, so it was all good. And we get there and it's one of those gray murky days where the sky and the water just kind of meld together at the horizon. And I'm having a little bit better luck than my dad. And so I'm headed back into the water with my dip net and this big burly man stops me and he says, is that man your father? And it was one of those weird small town Alaska moments that I hadn't really experienced yet. My family moved here from Michigan in 2008 and I say, yeah, that's my dad. And he points up river to this cute little blonde girl and her brother playing in the mud and he says, your father not only saved my daughter's life, he saved my family. And I'm sitting underneath the window on that vent again. I want to run, I want to bolt, I want to unhear what I just heard, but I'm knee deep in the mud and I just wish that the water would take me away with it. Because I knew my dad was a great and compassionate doctor, but what about my family? Who was gonna save us? And healing is hard. It's hard work that my family does every day. But sometimes the great thing about tradition is you don't have to think about it, you just do it. And this summer, I went fishing with my dad, and we filled my freezer with salmon. Thank you.